bringing you the story of the Environmentalist War on Off-Highway Vehicles, or OHVs. In Alberta, the government is listening to AstroTurf environmental organizations like Yellowstone to Yukon. These are people who want to turn the entire Rockies into a park and are kicking traditional users out of some parts of Alberta's public land. These are places we all own. So I have to show you this Facebook post from a group of dirt bikers in southern Alberta. I saw this thing and it horrified me because my kids and I ride dirt bikes in these same sorts of public places. Just look at these pictures. Someone strung a barbed wire across a trail in the Beaver Creek Recreation Area and severely injured a dirt biker. This could have been fatal. His head could have been cut off. What kind of maniacs do this sort of stuff? Is it a radical environmentalist who thinks a beheaded dirt biker is a fair exchange? If it means keeping legal users off the trails they built? I don't really know. The dirt bikers think it was eco-sabotage on the trails, calling the criminals who did this psychopathic OHV-hating radicals who attempted to kill them. The RCMP are investigating this, but would I be surprised to find out if it was actually done by radical eco-terrorists? Not even one bit. It's not a stretch at all. In fact, it's how these radicals operate. I mean, how can we forget Weibo Ludwig, headquartered on his northern Alberta family commune slash compound? He was the Unabomber, but for oil and gas for the better part of two decades, complete with a madman's beard. He went about sabotaging and bombing, yes, bombing, wellheads around the Hythe and Beaver Lodge areas. It was a reign of terror across the entire Peace River region before Ludwig was finally convicted, served time, was released, and then he was implicated in even more bombings before he finally died in 2013. He was a maniac and he could have killed someone, but the media called him an activist, as in just another normal grandpa concerned about the earth who incidentally bombed things on the side to get his point across. And remember Clackwatt Sound on Vancouver Island in 1992-1993? The media called the anti-logging protests there the War of the Woods and a victory for the Green Movement. But what really happened there was a nightmare for the innocent loggers who were just trying to do their jobs. Their logging equipment was repeatedly vandalized and sabotaged and 20,000 metal spikes were hammered into the trees of the forest. What would happen to a chainsaw if it hit one of those spikes? It could buck back and injure, maim, or even kill the operator. What kind of fevered, deranged mind even thinks up doing such a thing? And then there are all the instances of pipeline sabotage here in Canada. Line 9 is a huge target. Do we really think these mischievous idiots know enough about a pipeline to tinker with it in such a way that wouldn't prove to be dangerous? They really have no clue if what they're doing could cause an explosion or a leak or just an automatic shutoff. They're dangerous, dangerous morons. And then there's this lunatic who wrote a letter to the editor in a Colorado newspaper calling for the murder of fracking crews. And then he doubled down on the crazy in another newspaper defending his stance by saying, and I quote, I wouldn't have a problem with a sniper shooting one of the workers. I see fracking as murder and there's medical and scientific evidence of that, end quote. But these are not the words of some random wackadoodle. Andrew O'Connor, the maniac letter writer here, is the author of a ballot initiative in Colorado calling for higher and more punitive taxes on oil and gas wells. As in, he's a mainstream environmentalist. He's one of the, quote, normal ones who, I guess, also want to kill people. Which brings me to the next crazy person. Think people wouldn't shoot at oil and gas workers like that Colorado crazy man just suggested? Well, just a few months ago, a Florida man was shot in a standoff with police after shooting at pipeline workers and shooting their equipment. It was a sniper attack that Colorado kook Andrew O'Connor would totally be okay with. Okay, so by now you're probably asking, Sheila, that's oil and gas. People who hate oil and gas have always been crazy. Why don't you tell us about how these lunatics have migrated to hurting anyone who does anything in nature that they disagree with? Like, I don't know, daring to have some motorized fun. Okay, fine I will. Besides the guys who were also nearly beheaded in southern Alberta by barbed wire, just this past month near Kelowna, a man on a side-by-side -side -side off highway vehicle checking on some illegal dumping because a guy with an off-highway vehicle actually cares about nature, 
found some rope strung across a trail at neck height in a clear attempt to harm people who traveled the trail on dirt bike. I guess what's a few heads chopped off in the name of Mother Nature? The green religion is actually using ISIS methods to handle their non-believers now, except they figured out how to not get their hands dirty running a machete. Environmentalists hate people. They don't care about humanity. They actually see us as a plague. Just look at the founder of Earth Day, Ira Einhorn. He was another murderous environmental creep who composted his own girlfriend. And then the green movement gave him his own holiday. They'd probably give these weirdos a week-long hippie festival if they actually killed some dirt bikers. Endangering innocent lives to save a tree or stop development is just another tool in the environmentalist tool belt. It's what they do at this point. And now these maniacs have added fun to their list of things they can justify trying to kill you over. So no one is safe. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. To never miss a story, be sure to subscribe to our new Rebel Canada YouTube page.